What's up, everybody? This is Alex from WMD, back at you again. This time, we're going to take another little look into the DVCA, specifically the update input and the triggered setting. So basically, DVCA is a two-channel VCA, right? So it's two VCAs. The first channel, you can have the option to go bipolar or normal uh, VCA, unipolar. And uh, then the bias knob is basically an offset, right? So you can turn up or down the signal going into it. And then you've got a CV amount for, uh, it's just an attenuator over the CV. One of the unique things about the DVCA is the zero crossing detector circuit. We have another video on that. We have plenty of, I have mentioned that plenty of times. Um, but one thing that we kind of graze over is this update A input. And so what that is, is it's a control over just the first channel. And it's something that came over from the original digital VCA. And what it allows you to do is basically not let the CV affect the VCA until you hit that with a trigger, right? So basically, it's kind of like a pseudo sample and hold for your VCA level. So what is this useful for and what can we do? Well, it's definitely more of an experimental kind of thing. Um, it's really great for using if you just have something that you want to be a random level. And it's also really great for modulation. So we're just going to dive in and I'm going to show you two examples of how I can use it or how I use it in patches sometimes. And um, just hopefully this sparks some ideas. So you can tell right here I've got a pretty blank patch here. I've got a clock going into or just an output going in from Metron into my architect. And um, if I clear out that channel, there we go. So we've got a simple thing coming out of architect. I'm going to take the gate output, and I'm going to run it into my multi-mode envelope. I'm going to take the volt per octave output, run it into one of my spectrums here. And then I'm just going to make a quick, very simple subtractive patch. So spectrum into pole 0. We're going to go out of the pole 0 into the DVCA and out of the DVCA into the mixer. So yeah, right now we're not really going to hear much. If we put it on instant mode, um, we're not going to hear anything, right? I can turn up the bias and we can hear that start to come through. So I'm going to run my envelope out into my pole zero just to get a little bit more cool filter character. And then I can turn this bias down and we have stopped the signal completely, right? So one of the things that we would probably do just in a very simple patch is take the same output from our envelope here and just run it into the CV input on DVCA, right? And so now we can control the amount of CV we're going to be using. Or we can go negative. I can turn up the bias and we're going to get that negative envelope. So it's always on, but the envelope's turning it down. So we'll switch it the other way. This is a pretty normal use case. For so with these really fast, snappy envelopes, you can kind of hear those clicks. If I turn it to zero crossing, those disappear. Go back to instant. You can hear those. So that's the thing we usually talk about with the DVCA. Something we don't talk about, like I mentioned already, is the update input. So if we go to triggered, we're just going to get the same kind of uh, sequence here until I plug a cable in here. And then we're just going to get a static level right here, right? So our level is going to be static until we hit it with a trigger. And then it's going to stay wherever that trigger, um, wherever the voltage was when that trigger hits. So it's definitely not the most useful thing in this uh, scenario, right? So one thing I'll do is instead of using our envelope out, is I'm just going to run an LFO into this. So this is from my other spectrum. And now I'll turn this up a little bit, make it a little bit faster, just to make it a little bit more random. And now we're getting stepped voltage. And now we're getting stepped VCA levels. So we're getting stepped volume levels. This isn't going to do anything for our clicks or our pops, of course, because we're no longer using the, C, the zero crossing detector. But if you use a nice rich waveform, that doesn't really matter anyways, right? 
So this could be cool to use for any sort of thing that you want to just have random levels on, right? We can go through here, we can make it sample faster or make it update every 16th note. And there we go. So again, maybe not the best thing to use on a monophonic patch like that, but it could be cool to do the same kind of thing with some noise. So I'm just gonna take the Camara out. I'm gonna run it in here. We're gonna get voltage, or we're gonna get some noise coming out of here. Let's turn this up so we can hear it. There we go, so that's the, that's the sound that we're working with. I'm gonna do the same thing with the LFO. I'm just gonna run the LFO into here into the CV amount, turn down my bias again. If I go to instant, you'll hear that. So now we'll go to update and we'll just hit it with some triggers and go back into trigger mode. And I'm gonna turn this up into audio rate. So now we're just sampling from the audio rate uh, oscillator here. I can slow these down a little bit, the clock going into the update. And you can hear we've got different uh, levels going on. So maybe instead of the LFO, we'll sample uh, noise coming out of the mod box. So now this is gonna be truly random here. So anything you need random levels for, you can do that. And as I mentioned earlier, another really great use case for this is using uh, it for modulation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make my voice again, and instead of making a uh, subtractive voice, I'm gonna make an FM voice. So I'm just gonna go out of the spectrum, through the DVCA, we'll turn it up a little bit so we can hear it. And then we're just going to run the sine wave from the other spectrum into the FM input, go up to audio right here, and turn it up. All right, so there's a couple things we could do, right? We could send this, either of these or both, a sequence. So I'm just going to send a sequence out of Volterra here. And now we've just got our FM oscillator, our modulator oscillator is uh, being sequenced while our carrier is staying static. So I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to listen to what it sounds like when we do both at full per octave. Alright, that's cool. But our, F our FM level is staying constant, right? So we've got both oscillators moving to the same volt per octave. But our FM level, the amount, is staying the same. So we could change this by running it into um, a VCA and changing the amount of FM that we're going to get. So essentially changing this knob, right? We're attenuating that, which could sound pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is we're actually just going to switch this guy around now. We're going to put the audio through... Um, we're going to put the audio through channel B of the DVCA. We're going to send some gates over to the multimode envelope. And then we're going to take the multimode envelope out and modulate channel B. And now we're going to run the sine wave of our modulator oscillator, the spectrum, into the carrier oscillator through the DVCA. So if we go to instant mode, I can turn off the FM amount, turn this guy all the way up, and then I can give it that FM. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the noise output from the mod box again, run it into the CV amount. Now we're just getting some crazy CV stuff, right? And then I'm going to take a channel from my Metron, run it into the update, switch it over to trigger mode. 
and now we're getting stepped different modulation levels. So this is probably one of the most useful things is using this to attenuate modulation and anything that you want to have happen um, in a stepped manner and you want to variate like uh, modulation is really great for this. So now we can mess around with our envelope of our sound here. I'm going to take it one further. I'm going to take the output from our envelope that we're using and I'm going to use one of these handy Y cables and I'm going to run one into the VCA again and then I'm going to run the other one into the FM of our modulator oscillator and now we're going to get more of a pitch envelope thing whenever our FM's high. Alright, so to just go one further, we're going to take the audio output and before it hits the DVCA, we're going to run it through a filter. And then we'll take that bulb proactive signal out of the oscillator, run it into the filter here to open it up a little bit. Just get a little bit more character. And then just to experiment, I'm going to take the triangle wave out of our modulator oscillator, put it into the FM input on our filter. And now we're getting some real crazy spacey sounds. So unlike most of my videos, uh, this is a pretty kind of experimental sounding, just sound design patch, right? But let's hear what it sounds like when we add some drums to the mix and just make a pattern out of it. crashes out of Camara. What I mean by that is just big hits. So we're just only going to hit it on beat one and we got to find that channel and turn it up. I'm going to turn down our noise here. Oh, that's pretty fun. I'm going to take another output of Volterra and run it into my fracture and I'm just going to give the fracture some, some uh, triggers on the tick input as well so here we go and then with that Volterra channel I'm just going to change up the surface I just turned off that camera. Let's just make that happen every four bars. So I'm going to duplicate pattern length on my Metron and just put that camera sample or that camera trigger on the first bar. So here we go. Again, I can use the bias to just turn up the amount of FM that I'm getting and turn it back down and make it stepped again. Alright, so we are sampling the uh, noise output of the Modbox 
in the update input. So instead of that, I'm just going to take an LFO output of the mod box. <laughs> So there you have it. Using the update input on the DVCA can just be a fun little experimental thing to do. Whether or not you need uh, to, to do it with some purpose or just more of a random idea, um, I hope this gives you some inspiration of what you could do in a patch with the DVCA. Um, again, it is a super powerful module for 4 HP. Um, gives you two uh, VCAs, which we know you can't have enough VCAs. And if you're going to use them for audio and you want to do some subby stuff and get rid of the clicks, you got that ZCD. And if you want to do some more uh, experimental and just like sample and hold kind of stuff as far as the VCA level goes, uh, using modulation is a super great idea for that. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If there's anything that you want to uh, see, any techniques or modules you want to see me go through, just throw those in the comments or uh, send me an email or a DM or whatever. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.